Hi, this is Yohu Sapil Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again our regular Cassius Ru, VP of Customer Experience at Sayus Technology. Cassius, it's great to have you back on the show. It's good to be here. I'm glad to be back with you and looking forward to a, a great conversation. Yeah, and the theme of today's discussion is reasons why your applications may not be reaching advertised performance levels. Uh, before we, of course, go deeper into this topic, can you please explain what is advertised performance level, how it is determined, and how do customers know they aren't meeting the advertised speed? I like to think of it this way. Every company wants to put their best foot forward. Uh, so to do so, many companies will establish what they uh, consider to be their their gold standard for performance levels. And the way they do that is they set up a controlled environment where they can run a series of control benchmarks meant to put forth their best effort. And that's what they kind of consider their advertised um, an ideal best case. So uh, that's the performance level that the application can receive or that the particular storage device or network device can receive when it's in these uh, pristine uh, cases running a specific workload. And a lot of times customers will uh, realize that uh, they are not quite getting the level of performance they expected based on these advertised speeds, either because the application is slower or, or not as responsive, or they're just not seeing the, the, the amount of throughput that they expected. You may have seen that many times customers want to know why their measured performance doesn't match the speed that was advertised. Now, assuming that the advertised speeds are within the realm of physical possibility, obeys the laws of physics, and are real achievable speeds and not just clickbait, why is achieving target performance levels so difficult? Obviously, if we assume, one, it's within the physical realms of possibility and, and we don't have a kind of a, a marketing clickbait in terms of advertised performance, but that it's actually something that was measured reasonably by a standard, uh, there still can be a number of factors why an actual end customer may not see the same thing uh, that the vendor publishing those advertised levels were able to achieve. Some of them are just common items, you know, the CPU type, amount of memory, uh, disk type and disk speed. Uh, there are also latencies and some, those are kind of your, your known issues or some of the common contributors that we like to think about when we say, hey, here's an advertised performance level. And then when you're a customer or end user and you're not seeing those. But then there are some other lesser considered items like the infrastructure and the infrastructure setup, um, behavior and design of the test harness versus the behavior and design of the actual production workload, right? So a test harness is usually very consistent or can be tuned to be very consistent in the way it approaches uh, the, the test itself and how you collect the measurements. But, you know, we both know performance workloads can be very different, right? Uh, they depend a lot on how that workload is being generated. And so you may be a customer looking at what performance you're receiving and realizing that maybe your workload is a lot different than the benchmark workload that was used to get those, those ideal levels. And then, of course, uh, tuning and optimizations in a environment can make a huge difference in what's achieved versus what's stated. A lot of times applications, um, even hardware and other software, they come with defaults that are made for you know, the, the general public, but there's some tuning and configuration that will be needed in your specific environment to reach those higher levels. One of the, you can say, most significant factor that can affect performance is uh, latency. Uh, what are some of the common strategies that enterprises, businesses can deploy or employ to reduce both network and data transfer latency? Yeah, so I would say one of the first things that you need to do 
um, if you're dealing with latency as a, a factor in, in not achieving performance, is it's actually identify where that latency is. So we've had some customers in our experience that uh, think that they're having actual disk latency uh, when they're trying to um, see application performance, but what they're actually experiencing might be network latency first and foremost. So I'd say start with identifying where you are seeing that latency. Take measurements to understand how much latency you're seeing on a network or if it's a data transfer latency issue. And then if we assume we've identified where that significant amount of latency is occurring, then you start to use that identification process to figure out what are your actual strategies around that. So if it's network latency, you may want to look at your network topology. Uh, you may want to look at tuning devices and switches. You may want to look at some settings around the actual operating system. So maybe it's a TCP connection settings around Windows size or MTU. Uh, you may want to also look at increasing your bandwidth um, or isolating network traffic so that critical traffic um, that's really susceptible to higher latencies is segregated or separated off from other uh, network traffic. And then if you're in a high availability environment, you want to make sure that you are uh, doing your best to separate out the replication traffic and cluster traffic from that for users or even um, the, the clients themselves. And those are some ways to just some simple ways that you can improve uh, latency on the network. And the same strategies really apply to data transfer latency as well. Understanding where the issues are, uh, the latency can be caused by the, the, the workload and how it's structured. Uh, you can have some latency issues just in terms of the type of, of storage or data architecture you're using in your environment. Um, in an environment where you're doing replication and not seeing those uh, advertised um, performance levels, one thing to, to check is to make sure in terms of data latency that you're using the same types of devices on both your primary system and all of your target systems. It's a common uh, thing that happens in, in high availability environments where you're trying to save cost on a standby system to often choose to use different hardware on that system and that can introduce some unexpected and undesirable latency effects on data transfer. What impact do additional devices on network and hypervisor may have on performance and how can organizations effectively isolate their environments to prevent performance degradation caused by these additional devices? The presence of additional virtual machines on a hypervisor, um, they obviously they have an impact on the performance on uh, all the virtual machines running on that hypervisor. So a lot of times it's, it's great practice if you have a hypervisor host to put several machines on it. But if you're looking for uh, high performance for a virtual machine, you want to do uh, your best to isolate it against a term that Sios calls noisy neighbor. And that's where you may have multiple virtual machines running on a single hypervisor, and each of them has a very heavy workload, which strains the resources of the underlying hypervisor host. And then again, that gets uh, translated into performance issues on the virtual machine, which then you see uh, impacting your customer performance or your application or your data replication performance as well. So uh, having a lot of hosts running on a single hypervisor or having a lot of devices that are very network intensive in the infrastructure can cause problems. So you want to do your best to understand what workloads are critical, uh, what, what workloads have a high intense utilization, and which ones need that optimal performance, and then you want to architect your environment to accommodate. You can kind of think of it as like a freeway in which more cars can cause a traffic jam or a backup or lower your throughput and lead to other issues uh, the, the more cars on the freeway, at least in the state that I live, the more accidents and slowdowns and uh, rubbernecking and other things. It's the same principle when we talk about uh, adding a digital virtual machines to a hypervisor or having a lot of um, 
devices active on your network, the amount of I.O. traffic going to storage devices and between systems increases. And let's just be, be honest, there's an infinite amount of resources available, right? There's, there's no host that is able to always add more and more and more, you know, network capacity, storage capacity and throughput capabilities. So if you've got a system or a device that's chewing up too much of these resources, you'll, you'll notice a performance impact. And then what you need to do is uh, consider your architecture and restructure things so that you can get better performance. We all know that uh, we need to keep our systems updated, upgraded. Uh, can you talk about you know the impact of outdated driver and of course other application software on performance and what kind of best practices you would recommend to organizations to ensure that the systems remain up to date and optimized for peak performance? That's always a, a very uh, important point about staying up to date and staying current. You know, outdated drivers, outdated software they all um, can contribute to performance degradation. And when we're talking about achieving, you know, advertised performance levels, most, if not all of those advertised performance levels have been taken in a controlled environment where the systems are running with the most up-to-date uh, drivers, uh, most up-to-date software, um, the latest operating system with its required patches, and so they are getting their best performance by having things optimized and up to date. And if you're running older driver versions, you may be missing out on performance fixes. Uh, you may be missing out on tuning settings that have been made available in those later drivers or in those later applications and software uh, that you just can't get uh, because you're running on an outdated uh, set, of, set of drivers or the application you're using itself is outdated. So you want to make sure, not just from a performance level, but it, it has so many other impacts on businesses that run mission critical applications to, to stay up to date for security concerns and security risks, of course, uh, for performance concerns and achieving optimal performance with the systems you've paid for. Um, just staying current um, really is an important part of um, creating the best environment for your customers. And how you do that, it's, it's, of course, there are going to be some tweaks needed for your particular use case, but you want to make sure that you have a policy and plan in place. And you want to make sure that as much as possible, you can automate uh, the alerts of when new updates are available. Uh, you want to make sure you have a process plan or automation in place for rolling out those software updates safely in a way in which you can test them and then roll them out in a managed way so that you can avoid any potential disasters if, for example, an update um, doesn't work well. And then you want to make sure that you're continually monitoring uh, the performance of those systems when updates are rolled out. Uh, it's software, it's technology. Sometimes there are uh, performance updates to drivers that actually cause some undesirable effects. Uh, so you want to look at the company's release notes and you want to look at are there new parameters that need to be tweaked or changed as those updates are applied. Now, we have had this discussion so many times. The health of infrastructure is quite important. Um, can you talk a bit about what you have seen through your customers that uh, what are the most common infrastructure health issues that you have seen and how they can be mitigated to achieve optimal performance. Infrastructure health issues, a lot of times if you're on-prem, you're hosting your own data center, uh, you just, you, we, we touch on it a lot in, in technology spaces, um, it's making sure that systems are current and up-to-date. Um, that's all, often a cause that we see is where uh, a system is running a much older operating system, uh, the patch levels haven't been kept in sync. And so uh, just from the software standpoint, you're several revisions behind, you're missing several updates. And so that continues to cause problems in the infrastructure itself. But you also, if you're on-prem, you have the concern about um, how old is your hardware? 
Uh, how, how often have you done a hardware refresh? Um, what about your network devices and switches? Are those new? Are they modern? Are they up to date? Are they correctly configured? And so those all play into the health of the infrastructure. When you start thinking about cloud architecture, obviously you don't have insight into uh, how new or how old that underlying host is that you're uh, paying services for. But there are some health infrastructure components that you should be aware of in the cloud. And we see commonly, and that's simply the same operating systems that are running older uh, patch sets and patch levels. And so they need to be updated uh, incorrect architecture in the cloud. So um, not understanding how to best utilize your cloud infrastructure can cause problems where you see health degradation um, in the applications themselves, uh, simply because you're running on new modern hosts and hardware uh, in the cloud, but you haven't actually optimized to use or take advantage of that. So it's possible you have modern infrastructure, um, but you have an old um, architecture and that causes some health issues that, that you see. Another one that um, is very common in high availability environments or complex landscapes is where your infrastructure as a whole, um, individually pieces are healthy, but as a collective whole, they're under optimized or unhealthy. And that could be because uh, you have a complex system and somewhere within that chain you have a system that's under provisioned. Um, and so it's not able to actually perform and it becomes a bottleneck for the other systems in your, in your environment. And that creates a performance problem and it can be identified, but sometimes it can be very tricky because you see, for example, if you're in a high availability environment where you're replicating data, uh, you're seeing issues and you think that the performance problem is with the database on your primary, but it could actually be caused by the fact that you have an under-provisioned target server or you don't have the right IOPS on the data disk on that target system. And so as you're replicating data, you're seeing the health and performance of both the target system, the primary system, the database, and the applications using that database suffer because of that bottleneck. And so I would say um, do a health check. Uh, look at the components within your system and uh, look at where you feel like you're not achieving optimal performance and then honestly assess is that because of the design, the architecture, or the infrastructure and then make targeted experiments with measurements uh, to see if you can improve that performance. Just one thing to just keep in mind, if you're not seeing advertised performance levels, it's a great conversation starter with your vendor to understand, okay, this is what's advertised. Why am I not seeing the advertised performance levels? And then that gives you a chance to work with uh, the vendor to make improvements and enhancements and actually get better performance. Uh, don't just walk away because you, you thought you were supposed to get one type of performance and then out of the box you didn't see what you thought you should be seeing. Have a conversation with the vendor and they can oftentimes help you understand the difference between your environment and the um, recorded levels and then make tunings and optimizations for your workloads to get the better performance that you're looking for. Cassius, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and talk about this important topic. And as usual, I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.